Hi, in this demo we're going to talk about how Centrify can help sec secure Hadoop clusters using Active Directory. First, what's the problem? The problem is that you need multiple Hadoop clusters that are going to be accessed by multiple people, admins, developers, data scientists. Most likely you're going to be dealing with personal or financial or credit card data. Uh, that means you have to have strong access controls uh, and also implementation, right? So um, Hadoop clusters need to be secured. They're typically secured by Kerberos, and organizations don't want to duplicate uh, infrastructure by standing up uh, MIT Kerberos. Finally, the details are non-trivial because sometimes you have active directories that have one-way trust, cross-forest trusts, and there's the need to enhance the Hadoop experience uh, for users. And uh, in this demo, we're going to use CPS, Center 5 Privilege Service, to actually access our systems. This is my demo environment right here. I have uh, one active directory that is able to handle three different clusters from the three major vendors, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR, right? And I have a Centrify Server Suite installed. So um, looking at our, our um, you know, our, our clusters, as you can see here, my Cloudera manager, my cluster has been secured using Kerberos here. Uh, also, if I look at uh, Hortonworks uh, or actually uh, Hortonworks here, uh, you're gonna see that my cluster actually uh, has been secured using Kerberos, right? And uh, finally, uh, for us to see our MAPR cluster that has been secured, I have to actually access a head node and you know even show you a command and show you that everything is, um, you know, everything is kosher. So in here, it's gonna ask me for my AD credentials and I'm gonna log in uh, normally. And this is using CPS to get a, an SSH session to my head node. And uh, if I do, uh, you know, if I do a K-list, let's see if I have any tickets. I guess I do have some valid tickets. And uh, uh, let's do a, you know, a MAPR login Kerberos. And that shows you that, um, you know, I am actually um, running on a Kerberos cluster. Right, so uh, let's switch to Privilege Manager to talk a little bit about how Centrify can help you centralize uh, administration of multiple clusters, uh, leverage uh, Unix frameworks to provide centralized administration, streamline authentication, and policy enforcement. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to CPS, and I'm going to log into my member server. So my member server right now uh, is is uh, granting me, um, you know, the ability to do some of the management. Uh, we have some uh, some of the um, um, you know some of the consoles in there so do a manual login using CPS so and this is going to be my credential and uh, what you'll see is that I'm going to get a secure connection to my member server using CPS so uh, secure remote access is one of the capabilities that it has. So um, first and foremost, let's take a look at Active Directory, right? So uh, what you'll see is that I have all my clusters here. And what I've done is I've separated clusters by using OUs. Here in my production Cloudera server, I have my accounts. So these accounts can be either generated by Cloudera Manager or by using AD Key Tab. And I have my nodes. And notice that each node uh, you can manage just like a Windows machine. You can actually just uh, take a look at OS in here and you'll be able to see that is actually running uh, CentOS 6.6 and running Center 5 5.2.3. So, you know, uh, the benefit here is that regardless of how many clusters you have, you can use Active Directory and you can uh, use OUs to, um, you know, delegate administration, right? So uh, the next capability is the uh, the ability to group systems for access control, right? So with Centrify, we have the ability not only to limit access, uh, uh, to the right people, uh, but we can also control what they can do. So uh, first and foremost, we can consolidate Unix data. This is where all my uh, Active Directory Unix enabled users exist. We can also actually publish secondary um, Unix groups. So what happens is that, you know, if you have a group 
a primary or secondary group, for example, like uh, Cloudera does have a um, uh, the super group, right? So we can make it available and manage group memberships straight from Active Directory. Uh, that makes it so simple in, in terms of workflow because if somebody, for example, needs to be belong to super group, all they need to do is request access to this group, right? Um, other benefits have to do with, uh, you know, uh, how we do authorization, right? So uh, we follow the, the least privileged management principle. And what that means is that you can grant people the rights based on their role uh, and they don't need to know passwords. So I can have uh, Linux or Unix sysadmins that uh, should be able to access through any protocol. We can break those down. It can be, uh, for example, in the case of this Hadoop data scientist, he can only access through SSH, but we can give broad commands like having the ability to run any command as root or giving people exactly what they need. Like for example, in here, I have a data scientist role in which I can actually uh, give people a limited set of uh, commands, right? So um, the experience when you're dealing with uh, Hadoop uh, deployments, uh, people are going to be able to access HDFS and submit jobs through the command line. So it's really important. One of the capabilities of Centrify is that we Kerberize the machine out of the box and we can leverage Microsoft Kerberos. What that means is that your users are able to use, for example, SSO to, to log into their um, to their sessions, right, to submit jobs. And once they're in, it's, uh, you know, we're using Active Directory uh, framework and, and Unix frameworks to work. For example, if I run the AD info command, what you'll see is that, you know, not only I am joined to a domain, right, but also I am talking to a domain controller and I'm connected. What that means is that we're going to act just like a Windows machine and we're going to try and find a domain controller in case of a failure. And you have the ability to log in with cache credentials if there's no connection activity with AD. Another major capability is, the, is that we actually Kerberize everything out of the box. Uh, so uh, you don't have to deal with key tabs. We don't you have to deal with KRB5.com files. Uh, you know, we actually maintain that for you. So regardless of how simple or complex your Active Directory is, when you add remove domain controllers or you actually go up in a functional level, we'll take care of, uh, of that for you. And this, and this cluster can be behind a one-way trust. Perhaps you have an account domain versus a resource domain. You don't have to deal with any of those things. We abstract that for you. Another capability that we provide is, is the ability to enforce policy, right? So end users, they can, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and log in into my Hortonworks uh, head node here. Uh, users can actually, if they wanted to, you know, for example, what's the most popular policy? The password policy, right? So if I wanted to, uh, for example, change my password straight from the, the command line, right? And I wanted to do something like one, two, three, four, five, which ultimately is going to be too short uh, uh, and not complex. Uh, uh, our our agent is going to be able to continue to enforce policy, right? So um, a lot of capabilities that uh, allow you to continue to uh, keep the same administration process that you have in your non-Windows platforms as well. Uh, another capability is, you know, uh, Kerberos, right? So and I'm going to go here back to my MapR head node here, right? So, um, you know, if I... Um, you know, as you saw me before, I was able to issue the, uh, and let's take a look at uh, K-List uh, to see if I have any tickets, right? So I do have a ticket here. So you saw me do a MapR login, MapR login uh, Kerberos. And that's going to give me, you know, the ability to log in through the methodology of MAPAR, but still it's using Kerberos in the back end. But what, it, what is it that I want to be able to do? For example, uh, you need to protect the HDFS file system. So only people that have been authorized to the system and have proper credentials should be able to, for example, do a Hadoop uh, FS and then LS forward slash user. So in here, because I do have... Um, you know, a session, right? I'm able to do it. Uh, contrast this if I, for example, let's go back to my Cladera node, right? If I were to uh, K-list and let's see if I have uh, a ticket here. Uh, notice I, I have an expired ticket. This is really important, right? So Hadoop jobs are going to take a long time to run, right? Sometimes days. So if a user, um, you know, uh, submits a job and either by policy that after the 10 hours or by the renewal, uh, he's not able to renew the ticket. What's going to happen? Uh, the jobs are going to fail. So if I do the same thing, Hadoop, 
uh, FS and LS and then uh, forward slash user. Uh, if I want to look at the HDFS file system, I'm going to get an error because I don't have a valid ticket. So what Centrify implements is we implement uh, GPOs that allow you to help you with that. We have uh, a cap capability called Infinite Kerberos Ticket Renewal. And what that does, it allows users to submit jobs. And if, if they belong to a group that has been granted that capability, uh, those jobs are going to continue to run, right? So again, the devil's in the details, right? So um, if I just, you know, basically K in it here, and unlike, uh, um, you know, with uh, MapR, uh, that has its own broker for tickets in here. I actually mistyped my password here. So let's try again. Can't type and talk at the same time. So now I have my ticket. So if I, if I wanted to actually reissue that command, then I'll be able to see uh, uh, that. And not only that, I, I should be able to submit jobs as well. So if I needed to submit a job and I'm going to go ahead uh, and, and do a, a sample job, uh, I could just basically do, uh, let's see, let's do a Hadoop jar and Hadoop map reduce. So map reduce is the processing engine, right? Uh, it's basically what submits just jobs, right? And uh, I have a, a, there's a sample that is included with all Hadoop distributions is that calculates the value of pi, right? So, and I'm going to use five maps and 10 samples per map. So what that's going to do is going to submit that job in, in this cluster, right? And ultimately will allow me to, to get my results, right? And notice that I get the, the, the token delegation and, and I get the URL for tracking the job. So everything is, you know, fine and dandy with this cluster. And it's using the Monte Carlo simulation to actually do this which means that um, you know uh, which means that you know the number is not going to be very close to what we want especially because I didn't use that that many maps and and, and samples so um, you know this job is being submitted and notice that I already got my response right here right so uh, in basics you know easy integration with AD centralized administration with what you have curberized out of the box group policies to make stuff work exactly what you want and the strongest access controls so if you if you need to be able to tell okay I need to know who has access to a particular node or a particular cluster I can always go and look at computers and say okay I want to be able to know who has access to this I can show the, the effective rights that they have and you know filter if I want to uh, and I can actually see, okay, well, this guy here, this is his Unix identity. This is how the roles that he has assigned. Notice that also I have Windows roles. So this capability can be used to eliminate the problem of the persistent local administrator and limiting the scope or, you know, um, uh, devastation of things like pass the hash, right? So, uh, you know, how the person got the rights, what rights do they have and whatnot. This can be used with reports. This can be also done with PowerShell. And uh, we can also add auditing to it, right? Because when you are dealing with, uh, you know, especially card data or financial data, you need to also be able to reproduce what people did, right, today. So, for example, I can take a look at example, exactly what happened today. I get a transcription. So this is me. I can look at, uh, you know, the transcription of what I did when I was in a session. And I can also replay it as if it was a movie, right? So uh, with direct audit, you get the ability to, to get end-to-end -end session capture and replay. And when I say end-to-end, -end, that means that our auditing happens, you know, at the local level. So we have an audit agent and this gets forwarded to, you know, to the database. And regardless of the person going straight to the console, it's going, we're going to be able to keep track of them as well. Uh, notice also that this capability, because Centrify develops everything themselves, this is actually uh, available also on Windows. So what that means, everything that I'm doing, uh, also from a Windows perspective, is being recorded, right? So uh, you know I can I can take a look at exactly what the person is doing with the right context, right? So session capture and replay, cross-platform access controls, cross-platform, cross uh, and that should be able to not only meet but exceed any security requirements, integration requirements that you have so you don't duplicate capability and you make things work and launch your big data Hadoop project right away so, in a secure and a compliance way. I'm happy uh, that this demo probably you know worked for you and uh, looking forward to uh, see you at centrify.com.